Hello and welcome! You've now made it to my review of the new Intel Core i9-9900K 8-core processor, or rather I did make it. There were some long delays, first of all the poor availability of the CPU and then following that quite a lot of technical issues to deal with, which however had nothing to do with this 9900K. So to not be any later than I already am, I bit the bullet and bought myself a 9900K for a little over 700 euros and that's not even the boxed version but the tray one. So on top of that I'm not even getting too much of warranty here, if I remember correctly. The things I do for my videos and you guys. And some still have the nerve to accuse me of being paid by either Intel or AMD. Right now this 8 core now already goes for a bit less, especially here in Europe. At the time of this video we are talking of about 540 to 580 US dollars, but here in Europe we are looking at slightly different prices. So we know performance is offered here, that's no secret, but could this possibly be an overpriced beast? We'll find out. So for me things aren't looking too good in terms of accessories. All I get is this tiny box and the CPU itself, which makes perfect sense since I've ordered the tray version. The boxed one wasn't available at the time of purchase. Apparently there have been production shortages leading to scarce availability, but it seems in the meantime things have improved and you could pick up this chip in almost any shop. What has actually changed when it comes to the specs compared to the predecessor the i7-8700K? But before someone complains it's not entirely clear what CPU should be seen as the 8700K's successor. After all there's also an i7-9700K out there. But that's not the point of this video. The 9th generation basically is a coffee lake refresh, this time around quite a strong one with two additional cores for the new mainstream flagship model. So we are at 8 now plus the 16 threads thanks to hyper threading. Even the clock speeds do look impressive for an 8 core. The turbo clock is rated at 5 GHz, however only for 2 out of the 8 cores. The process on the other hand remains the same, 14 nanometer plus plus to be exact. A little more cache is on board and apart from all that nothing new really. The same memory controller, same integrated graphics, yeah a little boring I know. But a highlight is meant to be the 8 cores nothing else. With the 9th intel generation come along new chipsets as well, the flagship being Z390. A 9900K in theory should be compatible with older Z370 motherboards after a BIOS update, but some users do report problems like blue screens, overclocking difficulties and performance drops. So treat the backwards compatibility with a little caution. Now in order to eliminate the risk of inaccurate results, I got myself a Z390 board for this test, namely the ASRock Z390 Extreme 4. Oh and it's noteworthy, Intel has now finally decided to yet again go for a soldered IHS, something we've wished for for a very long time now. This doesn't help much though, you'll soon see what I mean. This makes overclocking a challenge, but more on that in my upcoming overclocking video. First, the benchmarks. So 
as you've seen, we are indeed talking of a real performance monster. The i9-9900K packs the punch and in terms of raw performance beats every other mainstream CPU there is out there. Even when it comes to those demanding rendering workloads, AMD's Ryzen 7 2700X was faster at for quite some time now. But at what cost? And by that I don't mean the money alone, but also how one copes with the extremely high temperatures and perhaps power consumption. But oh well, let's stick with raw performance for now. Starting in the productivity side of things, the 9900K sure does take the crown with its highly clocked 8 cores, especially when comparing it against the previous mainstream flagship model i7-8700K. But even the powerful 2700X by the opponent AMD now is at the second place in that area, albeit the gap is not really that wide. In games, Intel is in its element due to year-long optimizations and relatively high single-core performance. So one can indeed state this is one of the best gaming CPUs out there currently. But let's be honest real quick here, there are almost no or very minimal differences compared to the 8700K in that regard when it comes to games. In fact, there are cases where the 8-core chip does perform a little worse than the 6-core 8700K does. So one thing can be said right away, for gaming you don't need to get yourselves the 9900K. You're getting the same kind of performance with an 8700K, sometimes even slightly more. Especially when considering that almost excessively high power draw. In my case it's 260 watts on full load, that's over 100 watts more than the 8700K draws and over 50 watts more than what the Ryzen 7 2700X consumes. But fair enough, the 2700X does drop behind in games a little. Practically it's not something you would really notice unless you of course are into high refresh gaming, because yes, in theory there is an FPS difference for sure. Aside from the high power consumption, some will surely worry about the high temperatures as well. It's really hard to tame the 9900K in that regard. Even with a decent 240mm AIO liquid cooler, I reach into the 70 degree market stock. So yes, the IHS is soldered this time around, but Intel obviously hasn't done so because we wished for it. No, it seems to be a necessity here. But even with solder, when it comes to temperatures, that doesn't make the 9900K run all that cool either, to put it mildly. And I'm not even talking of temperatures under AVX loads. So who should buy what? It is a fact from a technical point of view. In terms of performance with the i9-9900K, Intel currently has the best CPU out, fantastic gaming performance and the best multicore performance in the mainstream segment. One of the huge drawbacks here might be the very high power consumption and high temperatures. That's costing you money too after all. But the biggest minus compared to the opponent AMD simply has to be pricing. For significantly less money you're without any doubt getting slightly less performance, especially when it comes to gaming, but at the end of the day, in my opinion, the Ryzen 7 2700X is the better deal in terms of price to performance ratio. It's not only cheaper, you also do get a cooler with it, the CPU consumes less power and is much easier to take care of temperature wise. So while I find both Intel and AMD have some excellent CPUs out right now, I feel like for the majority the overall package is simply looking better on AMD side right now. With the Intel Core i9-9900K I have some mixed feelings, for one thing I'm impressed, then again I'm also shocked. I'm therefore giving the CPU my silver award. And at this point, thanks a lot for watching.